to do. But really what was happening, he was, they weren't actually killing an animal, you know, I mean, chopping off an, a thing of an animal. They would shecht an animal's mutar. Nowadays already it's not mutar, but at that time, just from the Torah, that was mutar. So he misunderstood what they were doing. Now the thing is, the Bahasha Rebbe says that really what was the problem between Yosef and his brothers? Yosef and his brothers had the same argument that Yaakov had with himself. Yosef believed every spark needs to be redeemed before Geula. Every convert needs to get back to find their way to Yiddishkeit before the Mashiach can come. And every lost soul needs to be found. You're on the bus, you're off the bus, we're bringing Mashiach. We're the tribes, we're going to make it happen. Let's just bring that Geula. Somebody's asking a question. Okay, Saul asked the difference between what it says about Yaakov loving Yosef from all his sons and what the brothers say about it more than all the brothers. The first puts Yosef first among equals. The second indicates loving him only. Uh, possibility for the misunderstanding and enmity between them. Okay, if I understand what Saul is asking, he's saying the fact that he, uh, bits of, little bits of meat are being thrown against the walls of the dishwasher and therefore the dishwasher walls are absorbing the direct taste of meat. The water is hot in there and therefore cooking is taking place and therefore the walls are, 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 are absorbing the direct taste of meat because meat was surely thrown against the walls. Now, in the next load, when you put your milk dishes in, hot water comes in again. He does not consider the chemicals. Hot water comes in again. Hamayim teichef mikablim achalav be'en she'alach kelim, milk or cheese which was on the dishes gets mixed with the water in the second load, and the milk or the cheese gets thrown around inside the chamber. Shuv yotzei pleitat basar. Now the taste of meat is going to come out of the walls. Nitarev b'mayim v'asur, and the water is now going to have the taste of milk and the taste of meat mixed together. Ramon Moshe Feinstein, in his leniency, knew about this, and the reason he said it's okay is because according to the Shulchan Aruch, if you wash milk and meat dishes together in the same pot simultaneously, everything's okay, even though bits of meat were stuck on the meat, on the meat dishes and bits of cheese were stuck on the, on, on the cheese dishes. Nonetheless, if by accident, they all got washed together in the same big pot with hot water. In hot water, the Shulchan Aruch said, nothing is going to be prohibited because of the second generation rule. That's what the Shulchan Aruch said. Rav Moshe Feinstein accepted that position, and that was the basis of his leniency with the dishwasher. Now, now in exactly the same situation, the Bear Moshe <coughs> says we cannot accept the position of the Shulchan Aruch. Of course, he doesn't bring a re reason why not. He doesn't bring anyone who opposes the position of the Shulchan Aruch. He just says, we cannot accept that. Even though it's possible that the amount of water is 60 times greater than the amount of food stuck in there, uh, even though it's indeed possible that the amount of water is 60 times greater than the amount of food remains, as Ramosha Feinstein said, and that was the basis, uh, uh, one of the bases of his leniency, uh, who would, ev would ever say such a thing in a public way? If you say this in public, people will, will surely uh, take your idea and extend it in situations where it doesn't apply and people will misapply, incorrectly apply your ideas and they'll end up permitting something which is really prohibited. True, the, the, the dishwasher might be okay, but if you tell them the dishwashers are okay, who knows what the people will do with that idea and it will lead them into some error. Nonetheless, since Ramosha Feinstein said, next time we're going to have a shiur devoted to Hanukkah, and I want to talk about sufkaniyot. Uh, uh, I want to talk about uh, jelly donuts, not recipe, how to make them. I want to talk about kashras, 
I want to talk about kashras of jelly donuts and the ideas that we'll learn about kashras of jelly donuts will have broad application, but next time is a shear on Hanukkah and kashras, specifically jelly donuts. Look forward to seeing you next Shabbos. Until then, Shabbat Shalom.